Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 10, Supplemental, in our incredible new tutorial series where you're knowing where you're going with your ultimate GPS tracker project. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee, poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, let's jump in and let me tell you what is this supplemental nonsense about, okay? Those of you who watched last week's lesson, I showed you how to go into your NEMA sentences and to pull off UTC date and UTC time, and then we were going to report the local date and the local time on the OLED. Now, that is a pretty straightforward, uh, that's a pretty straightforward conversion to do to go from UTC to your local time. You just have to find your UTC correction factor. But there's a little bit of a problem when you start getting to the point that you're rolling over from this day to the next day. So like if you get up to 23 hours in UTC time and your UTC correction factor is three, you add 23 plus three, you get to 26 hours. Well, military time only goes from zero hours to 23 hours and 59 minutes. So you've run out over the edge of the clock. Well, in that case, what do you need to do? Well, you've got to increment your day and then you've got to subtract 24 hours and then you are at the right time on the right day with the right 24 hour clock cycle. And what I did in the lesson, I showed you how to do that, but what I wasn't thinking is, I wasn't thinking that not everyone has a positive UTC correction. So like here where I am, my UTC correction is three hours. And so I add three hours and therefore I'm running into the problem of at the end of the day, jumping past the 23 hour 59 minute clock cycle. And, you know, if, if this doesn't make sense, go back and watch last week's lesson because I explained it in great detail. But what I wasn't thinking when I did that is some of you have negative correction factors. And if you have a negative correction factor that you subtract a number from UTC time, your problem is not running out the, uh, you know, running out past 23 hours, your problem is, is that maybe you're at one hour and it tells you to subtract three hours. Now you have a negative hour. Well, in that case, what do you want to do? You want to, so you want to add 24 hours and then you want to decrement your day. You want to decrement your date, your day of the month by, uh, by one. Okay. Or you want to decrement your day by one. OK, so this is the problem. I showed you one correction for positive UTC correction. I didn't show you the second one for those of you who have negative UTC correction. Then I had other comments pointing out other special case scenarios, one being leap year. OK, like leap year, you got to deal with that. February has 28 days. You got to deal with that. Another issue is, is that if you end up at the end of the month, let's say that you're at June 30th and you've run past the end of the clock. And so you subtract 24 hours to get the hour right. OK, but then what do you do? You increment your day and all of a sudden you have reported that it is June 31st. So you've got to make sure that you roll to the next month on days that you're already at the end of the month. And so those were sort of things that we had not dealt with. We had not dealt with correcting for negative UTC correction numbers. We had not done the roll the calendar. OK, at the end of the month and we've not done with uh, dealt with leap year. And so I want to spare you guys uh, this. This lesson would be starting to get a little bit tedious. And so what I want you guys to do is I want you to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. This is last week's video lesson. If you search on getting UTC atomic clock time and date from the GPS and Raspberry Pi Pico W, you'll come here. And and what I have done is I have taken that code 
that we ended up with in this video, and I put the corrections in for the cases of when you have a UTC correction of a negative number, I fixed that, and then I've also fixed that where you're rolling at the end of the calendar. Okay, I fixed for the case of rolling at the end of the calendar. And so what I want you to do is just copy this code, okay, because this is not the code that I ended up with in this video is the code that I ended up with in the video plus the other corrections. But I would rather you guys just copy it and paste it in this particular case. So we're going to come over to Thani and we're going to paste that in. I would rather you just copy and paste it than me having to type you through it one line at a time because I really sort of explained the concepts last week and I don't want to make it so tedious that you've got to watch me type for an hour and a half. So what I want to do is I just want to kind of come into this code and start step you through it to make sure that you understand it. So this is what you copied and pasted from the website. Now you remember at line seven here, you have to look up your UTC time. You have to look up your UTC correction time for your location. Mine is three. Yours might be positive or yours might be negative. Now everything else is the same. And we're going to come down here to where we start dealing with the date and the time. So just like last week, you get your UTC time from your GP GGA sentence and you get your UTC date from your GP RMC sentence. And so that's good. Now what you what you know is that number is reported as a two digit number and we want the full year. So we're going to prepend 20 onto it. So like if you're reading 20, if you're reading 25, you change that to my year is 2025. Now my month is UTC of the date. And this is just manipulating those strings. It's going in and pulling out the things from the string. And so my month is UTC date between uh, uh, index two up to, but not including four. So this would be location two and three. And go back and watch last week's video. I really explained this quite a bit. Same thing my day we did uh, uh, in last week's video. This is how we get my hours. This is where you put in your correction. Okay, this is where you put in your correction. You always add the correction. It's just the correction might be a positive number or a negative number, but you always add it. Okay, then we extract my min and we extract my second. That is all the same as last week. But now what we have to do is we have to think about this problem that if I'm on the 30th of June and I'm at 23 hours and I add three hours to it, I'm at 26 hours. So then I subtract 24, right? And then I increment the day. I increment the day. But you got to remember and keep track of what the maximum number is because if you're at June 30th and you increment the day to June 31st, you just run, you've just broken the calendar. So then what we're doing here is we're creating this array of the maximum number of days. January has 31, February has 28, <clears throat> March has 31, and so forth like this. So we're going to make sure to check this max days to make sure that we're not running over the edge of the maximum number of days. Now, we also need to keep track of, is it a leap year? And <coughs> every four years is a leap year. So you do the year, your year, you mod it with four. That's saying that you divide by four and mod gives you the remainder. And so this is saying if your year modded with four is zero, that means it's divisible by four. Then what you need to do is max days of one which is the month of February. This is the zeroth month, the first month that you set that to 29. Okay, so now we know properly the maximum number of days that we should have in every month. Now, I did this last week where we have if uh, the, the new hours, the my hours where you've added your correction factor, if that's greater than 24, then what you want to do is you want to subtract 24 from it. So if you're at 26, you drop back down to 2. 
Okay. And this is just making sure that you put the leading zero. I explained that last week. And then what you do is, is that if you subtract the 24 hours, you have to increment the calendar by one day. So that all works great if UTC is positive and if you're not at the end of the month. But if your day, my day, is more than the max days for your month, which is my month minus one. Now, why are you subtracting one? This is an index. You started counting at zero. And so if you're at the 11th month, that is at the 10th, you know, the index is 10 because you started counting at zero. All right. So if you are at the end of the month, if you are greater than the end of the month, the maximum number of days in the month, you need to go to the next month. You need to go to the first day of the next month and you need to increment your month. All right. But now what else can happen? What if you are at the end of December and then you increment your month and now you're at the 13th month? What do you do? You got to go to the next year. And in that case, if your month is greater than 12, you've got to roll over to the month of one, January. But when you do that, you've got to increment the year. So guys, I swear, if I if I had thought about all of these special cases, I would have just said, let's just do the time and let's not try to do the calendar day. All right, <clears throat> let's do the, uh, the day, let's do the time, but let's not do the calendar day. The date turned out to be way more tricky than what I had thought. But now we have compensated for the end of day, we've compensated for the end of month, and we have compensated compensated for the end of year. All right. Now here we make sure again that we are putting in that uh, leading zero in case like you're at month two, we put a zero. If, if you're at day one, we put a zero in front of it. So it's day zero one. OK, just to keep the formatting nice. And same thing with the month. If it's month two, if it's month one, then we put the month zero one. All right. Now, what is the problem? That is for positive UTC corrections. If you have a negative UTC correction, you're subtracting a number. If you're at the hour two and you subtract three, you now have a negative hour. So here is for you guys with the negative UTC corrections. And this is something that I did not do in the video. If you're my hours after doing your correction is less than zero, you have to what? You have to add 24 hours, okay? You have to add 24 hours. And then again, we're just appending the zero to it. That's just simply appending uh, the zero to the, uh, to the my hours. And that's, uh, that's not any big deal. But now what happens is when you add the 24 hours, you have to subtract a day. You've got to decrement the calendar, right? You've got to add the 24 hours to get a positive number. And then you've got to, you've got to decrement your day. Now, what if you decrement the day to less than one? What if you dec at the first of the month, now you're rolling back to a zero, right? So if the, if the my day is less than one, then what you need to do is you need to uh, come in and you need to make my month the integer of my month minus one. Again, this is you're decrementing my month. So if you're at month seven and you're backing up below the first day of the month, you go back to the previous month. Now, uh, if my month is less than one, then what you got to do is you got to make my month 12 and you got to decrement the year. So this is just sort of like the inverse problem of what what we did above and above we were having end of the month and end of the year problems here we're having beginning of the month and beginning of the year problems and then that should do that correction now again we're appending a zero to the day and month we're pre uh 
appending a zero to the day in the month. Like if you have day one or if you have month one, we make it zero one or zero one. So it's always two characters long. All right. Now we just go in and we combine things up just like we did last week. Okay, guys. I hope you all will play with this. And I got so many great comments last week of you guys telling me the special cases that would break our code. And so I've gone in and I've tried to fix this code. And what I really appreciate if you guys would shake and rattle this and see if it's going to work for all the different possibilities. Now, I didn't take into account the Y3K problem. Okay, that it, the year 3000, yeah, this thing is going to this thing is going to have a rollover problem. And also the special, special, special case uh, leap years, which are like every hundred years or something. There's those real oddball leap years. I did not deal with those as well. OK, guys, I appreciate you guys. And again, hopefully you'll see that I didn't want to make you guys just type, 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 type and watch me talk about this for an hour and a half. And so it is an unusual thing. But what we're going to do this time is you're just going to copy and paste my code. You're going to come over here and you're going to get this code. And then we're going to all start with the same starting point for next week. So for next week, we're all going to start at the same starting point. OK, I hope that makes sense. Guys, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you tuning in for the supplemental. Again, appreciate a thumbs up and a comment down below if you haven't subscribed to the channel. And as always, share this video with other people because the world needs more people thinking about Nima sentences and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.